I um, did some work on trying to ascertain what best practice actually was uh, a few nights ago, trying to actually tie it down as to see if it had been judicially considered in Victoria. Um, to my disappointment, I concluded that uh, it really wasn't a, um, a term of art, it's certainly not a legal term. Um, it's more of a, a marketing term given to a, a collection of guidelines that are written by a particular officer when coming up with something like, and there's plenty of them, and I was interested to hear about the database of guidelines, uh, the Urban Stormwater Best Practice Environmental Management Guidelines, uh, the Best Practice Guidelines for Manure Management, the Draft Code of Practice for uh, Greyhound Keeping, and so on. So the term best practice will be construed having regard to what the actual guidelines uh, actually say. And so best practice is really nothing more um, uh, Online, in my view, than a term that is to be read and understand and understood having regard to the context in which it's written. So best practice in one area of practice might be completely different to what best practice constitutes in a different one. Uh, and decision makers will obviously have regard to these guidelines when, under, when trying to effectively conclude, have you done everything that the best practice guidelines say that you should? And so really what does best practice mean for on a, uh, on a practical basis? It really comes down to what you and what your colleagues uh, believe is an appropriate set of standards in any given set of circumstances. And by all means it means pushing the boundaries such that you're actually concluding that this is what I can reasonably articulate as being a high set of standards in this particular project. And that's why it really comes down to um, the need for you to do your own research, for you to do your own work to actually establish well, what is an appropriate set of standards for me to recommend in this, uh, in this uh, set of circumstances. Now, um, Murray talked, I think, uh, about the uh, naive view of the American system where it effectively says that it just anticipates that uh, the best information is necessarily going to be put forward. And that's why there is so much of a reliance, uh, as far as the legal system is concerned, on you as practitioners coming to the decision making table, having properly done the work, and honestly recommending what you believe is the appropriate set of standards in any particular decision to be made. And it's, um, I'm sure that the, the temptation is there <clears throat> for you to come up with something that's perhaps less than what you might regard as being best practice, on a day-to-day -day occasion because you're being pressured by the client to come up with that sort of response. Can I just say to you that as a, as a practitioner who is often in the situation of having to say to clients, let's use so-and-so as a consultant, yes, let's use so-and-so, that the thing that we want more than anything else is someone who's recognised as having integrity and is not prepared to come up with a cheap, easy answers just because the client is basically pressuring you to do that. Sometimes the hardest decisions are to to, to make are to effectively say to, to the client, you can't do that. And you've really got to sometimes box the clients around the ears, let's call it client management, in order to act effectively say to you, that's not an appropriate way of proceeding, because at the end of the day, we as individual practitioners rise and fall on our